skies all open wide, geese go high and over. Oh, now you're a beachcomber, fist full of sand fire, sea lavender. Sea. Hello and welcome to Deepdale Podcast, August 2020. Well, actually, this is going to be September 2020, isn't it? So I should really say, welcome to the Deepdale Podcast, September 2020, because it is September. Take two, clap. Well, there have been, it's, you know, people quite like listening to me making complete cods of the entrancing. Yay. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome to October 2020. No, wait. <laughs> wait. Is it 2020 or should we just pretend 2020 didn't exist and jump straight forward? Welcome to the Deep Dell podcast for a month. <laughs> we could just say, welcome to the Deep Dell podcast for the year that we would have rather not exist. For the year of weirdness. It has been weird. It's been a bit strange. Well, I don't know. I mean, I've got no frame of reference. This is my first year here, so I just assume this is as weird as this all the time. <laughs> I, I'm not going to answer that question in case I... Um, um, what is it? Kind of uh, yeah, uh, it's held up in court or something. It's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. It's just this is just the, always the way that it is at detail because this is my first year. I mean, if next year is is any different, then that's fine. I'll review th- things. Okay, but right now this is your frame of reference is pandemic and flooding. Pandemic, flooding. I mean, what day two in the job I was in chest waders. Yeah. In a very very cold big <laughs> puddle of water that was a bit. It was a bit like sort of wading around in a kind of a weak cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, Lighter. that's great. That was Caroline just um, taking the uh, throwing the Henry Hoover cleaning. into the uh, into this uh, into the hostel. So apologies if uh, if you heard that in the background. We're sitting outside. It's blue skies. There's a little bit of cloud. It's not not thing. It's 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 not cold. It's not boiling hot either. Lovely day. Wispy clouds. Yeah, a little yes. bit of wind. Yes, you Excuse know we me. are on the coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be that apple cake you served us earlier. Thank you. Um, uh. And. Um, yeah, it's it's you know it, we we are in 2020. It's lovely to have you with us. Um, you will have just listened to our beautiful new um, intro from Jess Morgan. Yay! Um, thank thank you, Jess. you, Jess. Yeah, that's fab. Lovely. I, I mentioned it to her a long time ago, and we never got around to do anything about it. And then I messaged her, and she said, "Well, well, you know, uh, yeah, I, I might get round to it at some point." And then about three days later, she said, "Oh, I've." I've done you something it's just that's fabulous thank you very much yes that's lovely it's very really lovely. kind and it feels very deep daily yeah i like the geese right at the beginning that's yes. really cool yeah that's i don't know where jess found that but i think that's lovely yeah so uh, and um that's jude carrying glasses in the background you can hear they're not glasses as in we're running a bar uh, which is disappointing but they're that's glasses as in the team's um uh, liquid liquid affair during the day and oh it's not alcoholic it's non-alcoholic just in case you were drinking no so. um yes and now that's jude who we have to say hey jude every time we uh, call him on the radio or across the courtyard i bet that in no way does that get annoying well he's very good about it if it does he hasn't admitted that he's really annoyed jude does does being hey jude uh, get get to you after a while or are you sort of just got used to it now <laughs> yeah, if you couldn't hear that because he's a bit of away from the thing, he's just used to it. He looked resigned to it, I think is the right word. Yeah? <laughs> you need to say happy birthday to your dad for me. I will, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably want to remember that. <laughs> happy birthday to his dad. Cheers. Um, Jude is one of the few people in the team who have to duck to go into the doors. He's tall, isn't he? He's very tall. He makes me feel like a shorty. Yeah, and you're a lot taller than me. Oh. So, um, yeah. yeah, so there you go. So, what have you been up to? I've uh, been playing 4D chess this morning. 
4D chess. It's a, it's a great new sport. We, um, I mean, do we, you know, have we, have we gone to sufficient pains to sort of lay out the basically all the exciting things that are happening on the farm? So we are, we are shrinking down the farm by about a third yep. by surrendering some land that we rent. So we're reducing in size. We are taking of our remaining land, which is about 260 hectares, and, I, and for those who don't speak farmer language, a hectare is an area which is 100 metres by 100 metres squared. So we have 260 hectares of land and we're taking of that space, we're taking... You need to do it, don't you need to do it in sort of parts of football fields or uh, oh. double-decker buses or something, just so everybody kind of... That seems to be the standard... Right, so it's lots of double-decker buses. <laughs> And we are taking, of that, we're taking 160 hectares, or lots of double-decker buses, and we're putting those into environmental features, which include things like flower-rich uh, margins, uh, basically lots of lovely non-competitive grasses and flowers for pollinators, and then lots of um, a another load of areas which will be wild bird seed mix. So we know that basically wild birds have lots of food sources during the year at a time at the time of the year like this. We've just had our swallows on the farm and they've been feeding up on invertebrates and they are basically now mostly they've just left the farm and they've Apart from one off. very sad one in the corner. No, he's gone, he's gone. Oh. We hope. So he's maybe he's maybe he's found some other mates to fly with. Yeah, possibly caught up with the others. You should have so, seen the clouds of them on the on the on the grain tower on Tuesday. It's just incredible. There were Amazing. hundreds and hundreds of them. They clearly they got the memo out. They're like, right, uh, Team Swallow, we're meeting at the Grain Towers. Uh, we're setting off. Make sure you've uh, you know taken advantage of the facilities because there's no um, welcome break. Or... Yeah, have you done a pee before we get on the bus? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, by the way, we are going to Africa actually. So um, yeah, so um, yeah, so the birds are on the farm at this time of year they've got plenty of sort of food, but during the winter there's a lot less. So we're putting wild bird seed mixes in, which is basically a sort of some cereals, but also stuff like millet and quinoa and various other goodies. So that birds will over winter will actually have a source of uh, a source of food. I can't think of quinoa without thinking of hipsters. I oh, know. You see, the birds on this farm are going to get to eat quinoa. You know, it, like it will have it in a lovely salad with some pomegranate. <laughs> it's all very Clapham. <laughs> it is. It is totally. But um, but they will enjoy the quinoa, um, whatever, or um, quinunu if you prefer to pronounce it that way. Okay. Um, or uh, quinoa. Uh, we don't know how it's pronounced. We don't know how it's pronounced. Sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we've these environmental features will be basically they are they are pretty much entirely just dedicated to wildlife. Now, what we have in the remaining one hundred hectares are lots of buses. If in old money, is um, those one hundred foot football pitches actually? A few football pitches. Some football pitches. Or lots of buses. Next time we need to got this right, we need to explain like a five hectare is X number of football. Well, pitches. if you speak acres, a hundred hectare, a hundred hectares is about two hundred and forty acres. Yeah, so um, that two hundred and forty acres, hundred hectares, is going to be. We're going to continue to farm that. So we're we're turning most of the farm over into environmental features, but we are going to continue to farm, and those one hundred hectares are going to be broken up into five hectare plots. All of these plots are going to be five hectares in size, which is not massive, but that will let us grow a mixture of different bits and pieces. And it's all the the work that we're doing on sort of soil improvement is having a basically we're moving the farm to a rotation which is focused on fertility building, resting the soil, bringing in lots of organic matter, and actually and beer and beer, growing lots of crops, including malting barley, which we hope they're gonna, we're going to make some beer with, including hopefully some interesting varieties of wheat, which we're hopefully going to get milled and make some lovely flour out of, which, you know, it will be sort of exciting. And then beans and uh, potentially oats and rye and various other goodies. And so in order for us to transition to this new way of doing things on the farm, we've uh, enlisted the help of Stephen Briggs, who's a, a Nuffield scholar, which basically means um, very he clever and a lot learned stuff. chap. Um, and a specialist in agroforestry, but also um, farms organically. And he's come in and helped us uh, to put together a plan, which also helps us to do the other part of this big plan, which is that we are converting to organic. 
and so we had a chat with him this morning and this is where the 4D chess thing comes and into And our play. brains hurt. And our brains hurt a little bit because we're working out basically what, um, where we're starting on the rotation with each of these plots that we have, where we're going to be putting in cover crops and there's a blog post coming out about cover crops soon about what they're about and what we've learned about those so far, where we're going to be putting in other features for fertility building. Um, some of these plots are going to go into clover for two years. They're just going to be basically in clover, two years, just building fertility, building up organic matter in the soil. And we, we have to work all this stuff out. This is a very different way of farming for, for this farm. Uh, this, is, you know, this is new to you and I. Um, you know, organic conversion is, is, is an interesting process, I think, for anybody who's undertaking it. And yeah, we're, we're jumping in with both feet, and it's incredibly exciting. It is exciting. Except, as I think we've said before on the podcast, there are times when I remember why I was not a good student at school, because there's only so much information that my, can go into my brain and be retained over a period of, uh, of like 24 hours. And there have been a number of days where the learning curve is so great which is probably just standard for any school pupil in one lesson. But for me, so great that my brain has just gone uh, uh, not having any more of that. I'm reminded of that line in The Simpsons where Homer says, um, it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> he basically just says something like, he hates it because every time I learn something new, it pushes something else out of my brain. Yeah. And yeah, I can um, actually feel it falling out of I the can. ear and rolling down my yeah, shoulder. No, I, no, I've, I, no, I've forgotten the names of most of my When I take my members, fleece off at night, I often find bits of knowledge sort of just lodged in there that have fallen out. You've got all that bits of knowledge stuck in your beard. Well, that's quite good because that, you know, yeah. I've kinda, I can always use those later on. Yeah, that's true. But it's, it's when true. you lose them into the washing that that's nothing you can oh. do. Oh, oh, darling, you, you've clogged up the dryer with knowledge <laughs> again. <laughs> all these question marks. <laughs> and they're very distinctly mine because they're badly drawn in my handwriting. <laughs> and um, yeah, they I think so. Um, but it, it was fascinating this morning, and I, I did feel like we were beginning to comprehend what it is that we're trying to do and how we're going to do it. And I think it's such a different way of farming. And as I said to Stephen this morning, I haven't fully grasped how we're farming now. So kind of the fact that we're now learning how to do it differently is, is even more complicated. But, you know, I think I, I, I think we are on to onto a plan that could you know is going to work and I think it's going to be really exciting and I think it's going to really really benefit the tourism side of the business because we'll have these other opportunities but the thing that really is exciting is that we could be producing Deepdale beer Mm, beer. and possibly bearing in mind that both of you and I do like to do some sourdough some Deepdale flour too which would be very exciting so we that's the sort of stuff that we're kind of playing with at the moment so we've got to there's just so you understand or just so I explain it and get told I'm wrong which is possibly the more likely um, there are different types of wheat so um, there are wheats that kind of produce very good just general wheat that can be used for things like animal feed then there are hard and soft wheats which can be used for milling and um, we have traditionally produced well we actually for a long time we have produced very good milling wheat Um, but dad kind of fell out of love with that because there wasn't very much of a premium and you can get really stung if you produce wheat for milling that isn't quite good enough quality and you you can find it sort of getting driven halfway across the country and then you get charged for transport to take it somewhere else and it all ends up being a bit of a mess and because there wasn't very much premium in it actually there's no point in sending them the wheat off to do that because you're basically taking a massive risk for a very little extra percentage so we've been selling all of our wheat for the last few years as fe- um, as feed wheat i'm sure that some of the grain traders have bought that then gone oh that's quite good and then sorted it into their pile that they're then going to sell onto the mill that's fine they can take that risk that's cool we know where we are yeah and but we've stopped growing barley on the farm for haven't grown barley for quite a long time and actually um it'll be really nice to get back to barley and because we're reducing the acreage we then can produce enough barley uh, to produce enough um tonnage to allow us to have it malted locally hopefully at crisp maltings then get bagged up as malt which can then be bought by local brewers to turn into beer and hopefully some of that will then come back here for us to consume when we're allowed to run events 
and through the supermarket so that we can actually have that, which could be really exciting. And then you've been having great conversations with Leathering Set Mill, the water mill, haven't you? Yeah. About taking our wheat to create flour. Yeah, so um, we uh, took over yesterday, took over a couple of sacks of our wheat from this last harvest over to Leathering Set Water Mill. Uh, which is just outside Holt, and it's a really, really beautiful spot. And uh, Michelle, who runs the mill, um, was uh, kind enough to show me around the place. And um, so Leathering Set Water Mill is open at the moment on Fridays, I think. And they are selling their flour, and they've got all sorts of goodies in their shop. Uh, I don't know that they're doing tours at the moment, but they are, um, they are open at the moment. It's a beautiful place, and they are the only uh, still functioning water mill in Norfolk. And, um, and yeah, essentially, you know, they are in a position to, they're going to do a test mill of some wheat for us and we're going to get that back and make some cakes and, you know, see if we can get some, make some bread with it. But hopefully in future we can be producing some deep dell flour and people will be able to sort of buy that directly, knowing where it's come from, knowing that it's been grown naturally as part of the, the sort of the new system that we've got coming in. Um, and getting it traditionally milled using a, using a, a water powered mill. It, it's, nice. It is exciting, and having it bagged up as deep dell um, flour will be really cool. And um, the the reason why that relationship began was that the guys who run the wood fired pizzas uh, company, uh, wood fired food company, mm, who come to us once or twice, pizza. good pizza. Um, they're here with us every Friday through the year, and then they're sometimes here with us on Sundays um, in the summer, and uh, they're going to do Wednesdays in September should be really cool those guys took some of our wheat about two years ago took it to leathering set they milled it and they put that into the pizzas so it was very nice to kind of see that sort of cyclical thing which got us thinking about kind of you know deep dell wheat kind of being used more widely and then I the Jack J show on Radio Norfolk that I'm often uh, uh, often uh, involved with uh, Michelle and I ended up on the same thing and we hadn't kind of appreciated that we had the connection until we were on air and then both of us went oh of course the wood-fired food company so it's just really nice that kind of thing and then now, now that you've met her and we can kind of develop that relationship and we kind of seriously think about it and it gets if we're in control of our own destiny with our own crop then that feels like a much better place to be than just producing a crop and then selling it out onto the commodities market so I'm really excited about being there being a story so that when you pick up that bag of flour in the supermarket you will know that that is you know you can almost see the field from where you're buying it as to where that flour came from and so that that should be really lovely yeah um i think the other thing you and i are getting really excited about with this whole thing is kind of the the showing of the farm to people and the kind of the education side and the open farm Sundays and all of that kind of thing, which I think will be really, really cool as yeah, well. Yeah, just really, I mean, it, we've, you know, it's been, it's been a little bit frantic recently with harvest and everything else going on. And we've been sort of irrigating crops, which we've, you know, we've not needed to do that because it's been raining a little bit. Um, but, you know, hopefully we'll have a bit more time and, um, and, you know, we'll be in a much better position to sort of open the place up and talk to people about what we're doing. And, you know, and the farm is, gonna, is going to look really quite dramatically different in future. Um, you know, if you look at the fields at the moment, you're seeing sort of fairly large fields. You're seeing sort of the fields going right up to the edges, edges of the hedgerows. And with the way that the fields are going to be in, in future, we're going to have fairly sm sort of small plots surrounded by, by wildflowers. It's going to it's going to look you know really quite different and there's a sort of there's a rationale and an explanation for all of this stuff and how it all hangs together, um, but it'll be it'll be really great to to see this starting to come together basically from this month. I mean we have essentially already entered organic conversion, and so we're already sort of getting clover lays into some of the fields that we can as soon as we can, and we're putting cover crops into other areas and you know the, the work is starting right now and I think you know if you look at the farm even just a year from now it's going to look really dramatically different yeah well you just you look at the cover crops we put in this year and the incredible wildlife that's there and anybody looks on our Facebook page or our Twitter feeds and they see the video that you took of the swallows just just having a field day you know absolutely loving it and the um, there's white uh, butterflies everywhere and there was bees and the, thing, and, the, and the great thing is they're on the pollinator mix now um, above Parsons Bush and they because we cut the um, 
uh, the cover crops at like 40 centimetres up, I think, and basically lopped the tops off the, the ones that were going to seed. Now the pea and the clover and stuff underneath there is beginning to do some really interesting stuff. So, you know, it's just that, and this is year zero of our, of our route into conservation. And the wildlife has gone insane in year zero, you yeah. know, month three of year zero. That's just absolutely yeah, awesome. So no. by the time we've got 160 hectares of that kind of uh, growth around the farm all year round, the difference is going to be so dramatic. It's yeah. just going to be incredible. Proof of proof were needed that, you know, really nature doesn't need a huge amount of time and it doesn't need to be asked twice to sort of basically take advantage yeah. of good things if you make them available to it. And, yeah. you know, I've seen this before on... Um, sort of there was a project I was involved with where there was a really sort of quite a long stretch of a river that I was working on which was you know practically all of the life in that river was destroyed by a sewage leak into the river and you know you give it a little while and the and the oxygen levels in the river build up again and the invertebrates come back and when the invertebrates come back the birds come back and you know and it, it you know nature doesn't need long and it, and it hasn't needed very long with this farm to take advantage and you know the, the changes that we're making even you know just a year from now will be a, a quantum improvement even from from where we are right now and uh, you know for me it's just it's just going to be heaven <laughs> So we've had a lot of questions about whether um, we're going to be doing the conservation weekends uh, this winter. Yes. And we kind of, we've looked at it and it's just not practical to do them in the way that we've normally done them because we can't do this socialising afterwards and we're not allowed to use the kitchen or the living, uh, or the living room of the hostel and we, ju- and we can't really have big gatherings. So what we've decided to do is sort of knock the, the conservation weekends on their head Um, however what we're going to do is we're going to develop a program of Wednesdays with conservation and we're going to at the moment we've got five dates in January February and March Um, every two weeks we've got a um, a basically a conservation Wednesday where um, that doesn't really ring does it we kind of need to come up with another word can we rename Wednesdays why not Ken's days or something, you know, conservation Ken. Wild, I don't know. Wild Wednesdays. Wild Wednesdays. I like it. Uh-huh. There we go. There uh-huh. we go. Excellent. So there we go. That was that was very easy and a Ding. quick brainstorm done. Um, and basically, what we're going to be doing is working on our thirty kilometres of hedging on the farm, and really getting that right. So that's going to be replanting, coppicing, and laying. And uh, Nathan's walked every single metre of those hedges and yeah. made notes on every single one. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to basically have a whole bunch of people on site just working on those. So if you want to join us for one of those conservation days, I'm going to feed everybody a bacon sarni in the morning and a cup of tea. Then we'll do a you know, ploughman's lunch and then probably a cup of tea before we go home. And the idea will all be nicely socially distanced in, in the open air, whatever the elements. So, um, and it will, be, it will be a lovely, lovely few days of, uh, of work. There'll be Stephen and, uh, and Nathan with their whips, making sure that everybody does the work. And you think that we're, I'm talking about whips to go in the hedges. That's to a certain extent, but they oh, also yeah. have very large cattle prods yes. to make sure that everybody works very hard. Oh, well, uh, well, well, yes. I mean, I, you know, I prefer to motivate with a kind word, but, you know. You know, sometimes necessary. Yes, yeah. yes. But yeah, so that should be really nice um, conservation thing. And I'm really gutted that we can't do the conservation weekends this year because the silliness in the evening after everybody has worked hard um, is um, is great. But you know, do come and join us. We'll put all those dates on our on our website, and we hope you'll come and join us. Yeah, and if you've not done it before um, and you're and you're curious, um, you know, we don't look for people to have a huge amount of experience. Um, because a lot of our existing volunteers that will be coming back, you know, they really know what they're doing, but we'll take the time with you to, to make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, some of the work can be a little bit more physically demanding, so you can really get your, put your back into it if you want to, but if you want to do something a little bit more straightforward, you know, every so often someone shows up and they've got a bad back or they're, you know, they're not feeling entirely up to it, you know, we can find different jobs for people, but there's going to be, we have masses of work to do on our hedgerows, 
um, and that's going to be a mixture of different uh, things. And we'll show everybody you know, what to do with that and make sure that everybody's happy. One of the most important things is that when people come along to do these conservation days, to, to do these conservation weekends, it's actually really important that we're doing a proper job of, of what we're doing because I don't want to have to go around and redo everything afterwards. So you know, we do actually make sure that we're doing a decent job of things. But apart from the hedgerows, um, in the future increasingly we'll have more work to do in the woodland and there's going to be various different things to do around the farm. We've got some ponds to restore. There's masses and masses to get into. There's, there's going to be no shortage of work. Yeah. And it, so you know, watch this space, look on the website um, and we will um, we'll keep everybody informed. You can look on either deepdalefarm.co.uk or deepdalebackpackers.co.uk and there will be information about those. Um, I'm working on it at the moment, so um, yeah, watch this space, and we will we will get them listed and updated. So we really hope people can come and join us. So much work to do, so much nature that's desperate for that work to be done. So really excited about that. Yes, and if you uh, take a look at the website, but also follow what we're doing on Twitter, we're trying to push out you know plenty of stuff about what we're doing on our on our social accounts. So you can find us Deepdale Farm on Twitter. You can look for Deepdale Farm on Facebook. You can follow Deepdale Farm on Instagram. Um, we try and share pictures and videos of what's going on around the farm and um, yeah, you know, go, go and follow us and see what we're up to. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you. Lovely to chat with you. Yes. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing that cover crops um, post. I've got to go and play some more 4D chess. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Counting bags of seeds and working, working out various out. different things. And and I love the fact that we're kind of having to bake with some of this stuff of coming up with recipes of what we're putting on each field and oh. all that sort of stuff. It's oh, quite it's exciting. Lovely. It's really, it's lo it is, it is like cooking. Yeah, it, it was like talking to a master chef today when we were talking to Stephen Briggs. Yeah, because he was like, oh yeah, you need a little bit of this and oh, a little need, bit of that and a little uh, bit of that. A little and, bit uh, of the white mustard, bit of the lucerne. Uh, throw in a little bit of the red clover there. Top it off with a sprinkling of uh, late uh, flowering uh, perennial ryegrass, and uh, mwah! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, the bees will love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Thank you, man. Cheers. And um, we will talk next month. Yes. Well, you and I will talk a lot, but before then, but you know, we will talk next month. So cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
so it's it's always a lovely place for me to come i i love being here whether it's pop-ups or spring market or christmas market it's you know it's always a, a pleasure to meet meet the visitors and customers and um yeah estelle estelle manages the pop-up shop so she uh, takes all the bookings and um sorts all the the uh, various um arrangements out and um they've got a good one-way system so that people can come in and have a look and um and then pot around and keep their social distancing lots of hand gel around so if you are popping in um, the pop-up shops are open um, right through till the end of october and then they'll be open again for um the weekends prior to uh, prior to christmas um so um oh di's actually said hello <laughs> it means she's on the she's on the podcast um so there we go the sh- shock horror um but yeah if you're if you're popping past this way then the, they change over on a wednesday so uh, you won't necessarily get any shopping on a wednesday from these uh, these four pop-up shops um they change on a wednesday so they're open from uh, thursday through till tuesday and um the, all local artisans and producers so we've got another two months of them still to come this year uh plus the time near christmas so um you're welcome to pop in and see who's here all of them are listed on our website at dalegatemarket.co.uk So tell me who you are. Dye Woodburn, Creaky Crafts. What sort of stuff do you sell? I sell a lot of sea glass jewellery and some other bits and bobs, but mostly sea glass. And um, been an interesting year? Very, very interesting <laughs> year. All I've done so far is two pop-up shops, nothing else. So, been interesting. All the other events um, cancelled, sadly, and um, gone by the wayside. But um, is it going well here? It's going very well here. Much better than I thought it was going to go, actually. So I'm really pleased. So I didn't know whether people would want to buy or want to touch things or... I don't know. You know, just have to try it and see. Yeah, yeah. And um, Dye's a, a regular of our spring market and Christmas market in the past, and normally in the pop-up shops as well. Um, so hopefully uh, she'll be back then. Are you going, have you got any more pop-up shops before the end of the year? No, no, nothing. Nothing other than at the moment, possibly a week at Blakeney, but not until the end of October, so who knows. Just take it as it comes really now. Yeah, yeah. Well, um yeah if, if you're coming past this way then um you definitely need to pop in there's a uh, fantastic fridge magnets of uh, local maps and uh, uh, coasters and um little bees what are the bees are they uh, are they earrings or what are they the bees the bees are cards with sayings on be happy be cool be kind be whatever very good very be. good yeah and uh, and uh, di hel- um helped us put together a uh, um our uh, Christmas hampers for the team um, last year. They put in uh, some Christmas badges and uh, and some key rings and and that kind of thing. So uh, that was lovely. Um, but um, yeah, do pop in and uh, and and see the stuff. What what inspires you? Um, well, Norfolk expi- inspires me. The sea glass inspires me. Um, but it's not just sea glass. But sea glass is my main focus. The only shame is that I can't pick it up on the beaches here. So most of my sea glass comes from County Durham because that's where the Victorian glass factories were. Got you. So, um, yeah. Got you. So you have to you have to follow where they they dumped the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to tell people, and they look at it and say, "Oh, it's found on the beach." I always have to say, "But not the beaches here. You could search for hours here, and maybe find one piece if you were lucky." So, yeah. Oh, interesting. Got you. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah, if you want sea glass, go near where the old Victorian glass factories were. There you go. But, um, but uh, yeah, uh, Di's not going to tell you that, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Di. Thank you. I'm standing in one of our pop-ups. It's the green one, uh, which is James's favourite pop-up shop. Um, he's been here before, and he is running um, his own little pop-up studio. Tell me a bit more about what your work is. Well, what I do is um, I paint what's pretty much a, a naive contemporary pictures. They're um, all penguin-based, and it's really a matter of trying to get your own feelings and life experiences through a penguin-shaped mirror. Nicely put. Um, and why penguins? 
It's an animal that I've just absolutely loved since I was a child. Um, I mean, all my friends at school, like the tigers, the sharks, all the cool animals. Um, I've always loved penguins. A, a, a bird that can't fly. What's what's not to be fascinated by? Yeah, we've got we've got uh, one or two of your pictures at home, and uh, um, I love the one with the, the penguin holding the umbrella out for the other pe- uh, penguin. You know, that's just uh, fantastic. I do love that. It's great. And then, what brings you here? Uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to to actually get out of the studio, set up a, a studio elsewhere, right in the middle of where the public are, letting them come and see, uh, spending more time talking than painting, if I'm honest. Um, but absolutely loving the interaction. The, it, it's You can spend weeks stuck in a studio painting away, and you're never quite sure if you've taken yourself down a... A direction that may be not working but when you're out here and you're talking to people the the um the affirmation is great the conversation is great and um and the sales do help <laughs> that's good and uh, and and how's um how's the weirdness been uh, you've been um keeping yourself busy yeah I, I think lockdown for artists was normal I think the th- the thought of not going out and being stuck in a uh, one place is something that I think we've all been training ourselves for years. So um so that wasn't too bad. Um and and still having a um an online presence helps because everybody during lockdown goes onto the internet to find you. Um but it's 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 great now we're out and about and you can finally be kind of mask to mask with the people again. It's um no it it's been it's been really good and I you know this is um the first day and already it's it's been really well received that's good well welcome back and um yeah you'd normally see james at the christmas market but of course not this year um so fingers crossed um for uh, for future events and we'll see see what the uh, the future holds and uh, where we go next um but um yeah come and come and visit james and his uh, his penguins in uh, in the green pop up um at delgate market if you happen to miss uh, Paul Macro, Creaky Crafts, artwork by James Butefant in the Cushion Cottage, who were some of the guys that I just interviewed, uh, then they will be back with us from the 13th to the 15th of November. It's an extra date. Uh, Di had said that they, she wasn't back again this year, but they've actually uh, we booked in an extra date, uh, so the 13th to the 15th of November. Of course, the pop-up shops are open every week, um, all the way through till the end of October, and then weekends in November, December. Um, so you can pop on to dalegatemarket.co.uk to find out who's coming when um, and there's some really lovely lovely artisans and producers joining us the changeover day is wednesday um, so they're not always fully open on a wednesday because they're setting up uh, but then they're open from thursday through to the following tuesday we look forward to seeing you pop in and see them <laughs> So hello, Georgie. Hi, Jason. Are you all right? Yes, are you? Yes. It's a weird, weird day today. The weather's not quite... Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of autumnal. Warm. It's sort of warm and sort of... You can't really make its mind up what it wants to do today. And it's darker at the moment as well, isn't it? It's yeah. not, you know, sunny and summery like it has been. It's almost like September But it's too warm hitting. to wear a fleece almost. I yeah. know you're, you're, you, you, well, you feel the cold, cold in a different though, way. So, so. Uh, yeah. I will always be wearing a fleece. <laughs> it's, it's my permanent state. But yes, no, it's autumn. So we're sitting in the sitting room. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you, you will have already listened to uh, and the wonderful new uh, little podcast um, starter music from Jess Morgan, which yeah. is fab. First Thank you, is Jess. the debut of that that track for this. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, That's it's fun. quite scary. Really. I've realised I'm just leaning backwards and my beard is sort of scratching on my microphone. Which is <laughs> not very Shame. professional. I always have that problem. I always <laughs> have that problem with my beard. <laughs> the beard in lady. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it's um, yeah. And you, we've got some uh, interviews with the with some of the pod. Uh, the quite a lot of content guys. this time. I think we're yeah. going to have to keep our bit brief because we've got the um, we've got some chats with the people from the podcast yeah. and some discussion, which I think with Nathan about um, what's all the stuff that's going on 
on his side with the farm. Yeah, so, exactly. And um, we've got quite a lot of events happening as well, which is a real... Yeah, we've got a lot to, 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 sort to of kind of ram in. Cram so into a short, short let's time. leap straight into it. You know, okay, so, so uh, Houghton Hall, the Amish Kapoor um, event. I was quite excited to talk about that. Sorry, I know you mentioned it, but I'm getting in there first for that because um, I'm really excited to see this. Um, the Damien Hurst event that was at Houghton Hall um, has fairly recently, kind of early this year, I think, um, finished, and Amish Kapoor is now there. Um, some of I, I've heard, some of my friends have been, and they've given me really, really good reviews. So I'm really keen to go. Um, I went to the Damien Hurst exhibit, but I've, I haven't been yet to, to the Amish Kapoor. And now that it's kind of quieting down on the Norfolk coast, ever so slightly. Um, a lot of the children are back to school and things like that. I'm hoping it might be a good time to go. Maybe, maybe next. The nice thing is that, like, even in these weird times, like, there's so much space in the How to Gardens yeah. where where the the exhibition is that actually it's really easy just to kind of almost be there with and think nobody else is there and they're because they're doing time ticketing and absolutely stuff, and it doesn't easy. feel as strange i like going to events and going to places where you don't feel like you're surrounded by people that are you know you don't feel like you're surrounded by people and therefore you don't feel like everyone's adhering to the rules because yeah. it's you know it's a global pandemic at the moment when i go into the supermarket it feels weird okay so i like being able to go to the beach and i'm not surrounded by people with masks it's just me and my dog maybe a few other people and some fresh air yeah no it's good and uh, the Inesh Kapoor it, like I, the thing I love about the way that Houghton does their outside sculpture is they go for big stuff yeah you know, they go hard or go home with yeah stuff, exactly and so they started with just a few small pieces not well no, they weren't small pieces but a few pieces around the site and then they've done big things like the Henry Moore which I absolutely loved at the Henry Moore exhibition I, I, I'm a I'm a sculpture fan at the best of times but Henry Moore just does it for me <laughs> um I didn't go and see the Damien Hurst. I'm, I, 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 he's, he's yeah. not for you. He is not. He That's is fine. not my That's artist. Fair <laughs> um, and um, but the Anish Kapoor stuff looks amazing. It's like sort of sky mirrors and you know all of that sort of stuff. So yeah. I, I really like the idea of all of that. I think that's really exciting. Quirky. So that's really cool. Of course, the pop up shops at Delgate um, are going on. And they're going they're strong as really well. You know, well. they're yeah. still really busy. And we've like Estelle's booked all of them right through till Christmas which Brilliant. is just awesome so I think we've only got a couple of weeks between now and Christmas where we haven't got pop-up shops yeah because there's been so much demand for them of course so many of the people who come into the pop-up shops haven't got other events to go to so they're all sort of booking pop-up shops so that's really yeah. exciting so we've now got a, a whole series running through until Christmas so basically they change every Wednesday so if you come on a Wednesday you might find some pop-up shops but on the whole the pop-up shops are open from Thursday through till the following Tuesday. Um, really, really wonderful local artisans and producers. You'll find all sorts of interesting stuff, and it's a great addition to the the regular shops that we have. So I was really about to say to the, the regular shops. We mustn't overlook them because no, you know absolutely. they are they're always there. Um, but obviously, they are selling some really quirky stuff related to the coast, related to Norfolk generally. Nice gifts. Um, just generally the area. It's beautiful to take a walk round got some really lovely places to eat including some of the caterers that we have and um, at the moment we've got um on wednesday night we've got the wood-fired pizza company and the same on friday night this saturday or sunday we did have the egyptian guys oh yes yeah, yeah and we're, been... we're sort of having uh conversations with them about sort of whether we could kind of book them in for future so watch our watch our website this is a street food page and you know keep an eye on that and hopefully yeah. that'll update you for other stuff what i'm saying so is cool. that there's plenty you can come you can take the dogs for a walk you can come for a walk with your family do some bird watching do some shopping get some food and support some local like producers and artisans and stuff it's lovely well. isn't it it's yeah. really nice it's a good place to and be. um sort of other things that to look forward to to our, um, you know, there's sort of other events are beginning to happen. You know, the, the guys in the glass studio are doing their, their glass workshops. Yeah. So right. that's in Driftwood Glass Studio, which is on Delgate Market. Um, you know, you can come in and do those. But the one I'm, I'm really looking forward to is the um, Norfolk Church's sponsored bike ride. Yes. Where it's a great opportunity to just go and visit a huge number of Norfolk churches. You don't have to be religious. You just have to appreciate that these buildings are well, there's so many of them in Norfolk and they are, you know, they were built by people by hand and some of these buildings are just truly, truly impressive. Like you said, you, you don't know. have to be religious. You can be interested in, it's a brilliant opportunity. I have done it once many years ago, um, like when I was much younger um, and it's a brilliant way to see 
see areas of Norfolk that you've not been, really small villages that you go, I've never even heard of that place. And they've got really interesting architecture, history and surroundings around them. And you get to use that bike that you bought on a whim in lockdown and haven't (laughs) used since then. That's very true. That's very true. And and you also get, like, most years there's some really interesting places that never open. So little churches that have kind of plague churches where the village was moved because of the plague, you know, burnt down and the church remains, often aren't open to the general public and often they're manned during this. There's... um, uh, there's some ruins that are open, you know, that sort of thing, which is really worth doing. So that's the Norfolk Church's sponsored bike ride. If you go onto our website, you'll see it. It's listed under September and you will um, find all the links you need for um, for sponsorship. You know, uh, there's a link to which churches are open, like St Mary's Church here in Burnham Deepdale is open. So you can definitely go in and see that. And if you're not riding for a Norfolk Church, basically the way it works is that if you ride for a local church, you, um, you some of the money goes to that church and some money goes to the the, um, the general involved, uh, general yeah. pa- uh, Norfolk uh, parishes so if you if you ride for if you aren't riding for a church then please ride for St Mary's Church in Burnham Deepdale because then Burnham Deepdale Church will get some of the percentage of things so if you if you download your forms please put St Mary's Church Burnham Deepdale as your place um, of church you're supporting if you're not already supporting somebody else sorry just thought I'd get <laughs> that in isn't being paid to say that no no but my mother will be very happy with me <laughs> as a church warden so she'll be very happy um uh yeah so parts run right through what else have we got on the list let's have a quick look sorry I'm scrolling down here and think ah yes the Norfolk Coast Dark Skies Festival yes you mentioned I don't know how I forgot about that no we talked about that about 10 minutes ago and then we managed to forget I got distracted talking about food (laughs) and and my dog wanted love so you know maple wanted love (laughs) so yes exactly exactly yeah um, so this one, normally it's a two-week festival. Uh, normally it um, comprises of a whole lot of kind of big group events and all sorts of stuff. Of course, COVID kind of played... Uh, played Ruins things. Yes, it sort of Strikes uh, edited. Um, but um, it's instead what they're going to do is they're doing more of a sort of an online event that they really want people to get involved with for four days from the 23rd to the 26th of September. And it's um, the idea is that you you sort of watch the the websites and the Twitter and all that sort of stuff to see what you can be seeing out there. They'll give you sort of advice and thing. And then whether you've got a pair of binoculars or a telescope or whatever, the idea is that you can go out and enjoy the night sky, really enjoy that, and then share what you've seen to other people. And it, it's a really nice idea. It's a really good way of making an interactive event in weird times but and you... to continue because it is something that a lot of people really enjoy the dark skies event so to Absolutely. not be able to do it would be such a waste so although for some people it might not be the same for other people you might find that you actually because everything has been made really accessible by the fact that it's online you might find that you're actually able to maybe get involved a little bit more than you normally have done so give it a go if you've not tried it before give it a go and if you've done it every year then try it this way you might prefer it and on a clear evening you will be amazed about what you see up yeah. there you just have to take the time find a hammock find a chair up, find people. a deck chair just look yeah up. look up and look at those skies and watch what's up there because it's it's incredible and like the i love it when people come here and kind of go oh my god so many stars yeah, uh, you know, because they're used to. We so take much it for granted, don't we? we do. Living, living we by do. the coast, you do take it for granted. But if you don't live by the coast, or it's not something you can see so clearly, yeah. so many things that you'd maybe not normally be able to see. And we're open. You know, lots of other places are open, so you you could be here over that weekend and see the, the skies. It is actually the weekend when our festival would have been. I don't want to talk about that right now, Jason. But you know, oh. so you know, this is a, it'll be a great weekend to come and just sit outside a motorhome look at the sky see the amazing stars see if you can see the milky way you know all of that kind of stuff and um or take a walk down on the coastal footpath and just sit in the grass on the side of the coastal Mm. footpath looking out at the fresh air honestly it's underrated yeah it's just yeah and it's a great way if you're feeling a bit stressed in these weird times good thing we were i was talking to a friend the other day and they, they were a bit stressed and i said just go down to the beach and scream at the sea. The sea <laughs> is a really that so good listener. so many times I still haven't given it a go. Oh, you have to. If you're having a bad day, really good way. The, the sea is very forgiving and a There's good There's going to be so many people listener. listening to this podcast podcast and going, oh, that was Jason that we saw the other weekend <laughs> doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm pleased to say I haven't needed that for a little while. Not but, really. Uh, it, you know, actually. Yeah, in moments, you know. Good in moments. 
Um, and things like the farmers markets are ongoing. You know, they're slightly different in the way they're organised. But you know, you've got things like Fakenham Farmers Market are going on, and the um, uh, the docking local produce market, that sort of stuff. So you know, it's nice to be having stuff actually happening. Yeah. And not that sort of big list of stuff that isn't happening. Might so still be strange, um, you know, in, in terms of walking around, seeing everyone wearing face masks. And we do still ask, we, you know, everyone still asks you to maintain social distance and things like that. But this time of year, it's a bit easier to do that because the children have gone back to school. It's still quite busy on the North Norfolk coast. I think some people are trying to get the most out of the sunshine while they still can. Um, but there's so much to do. There's so many places to go and visit and see. Um, that you can still socially distance and enjoy the place. So. Yeah. yeah, and of course the geese arrive soon. I know, I'm excited for those, because the swallow have left now, haven't they? Yeah, that is really sad. The swallows leaving is, it's sort of, yeah, it's a bit of a sad point in the year. They're really, really beautiful, um, but for me, them leaving is like, it, it, it's their way of saying, yeah, we, we've done our bit now, the geese are going to come, because the geese for me, like, say autumn you know I've got so many memories of leaving this place when it's dark out and maybe the Christmas lights are up or whatever sorry I said the c word everyone um you know the pumpkins are out or whatever I, I'm a big fan of autumn and for me this, the sound of geese is just like autumn yeah and they if you've never seen them you need to see them it's really impressive they are genuinely amazing. not just saying it because no, of the but podcast with tens of thousands of geese filling yeah. the sky the noise is incredible and it just yeah it, it's it's it is a natural phenomena mm-hmm. and it's just amazing but i think watching the swallows gathering before they went was also like a really amazing thing because they were all they were sitting on every little ledge of yeah. the grain towers there were just thousands of them and, and the picture that we got well. as well there are five little yeah, the babies Car- the Caroline lined up. took yeah. with the five uh, five lined up list thinking is it time to go now they re- it really does they almost look stuffed they're just absolute this for this picture they are just sat perfectly mm. and there was one left wasn't there that was a little bit we were a bit worried about that one it was last week wasn't it, it was he just, went, everybody else had gone they went was he, one, she, it, and, it, and it was like okay are you going but then the next day it had gone so fingers crossed it found some other mates made it. and yeah. it's on its way yeah. um, so uh, but it was a bit sad because we were like oh there's one left that's very sad did you not what's get the memo what's going to happen what's going to happen yeah, it's Hello. like um, yeah everybody else has gone out for the staff dinner and you're you're, you're the only one in the office <laughs> it's, it's not good uh, but um, yeah so uh, fingers crossed fingers crossed um, they will all be back because they had an amazing year the swallows yes they really did. They, yeah, uh, I don't think I've seen a nest of five before. I've seen no. nests of three and four, but not five. So that was really quite. quite and they cool. absolutely loved having the courtyard to themselves. Yeah, they got much. a little bit. I think they were probably a bit put out when we came back in early July. But you know. Yeah, yeah and they, um, but they also absolutely loved the amount of food they had from all of the um, invertebrates and um, insects and stuff that we're enjoying our cover crops. So, yeah. You know, that was really lovely to see because you know this is years. This is sort of year zero of our changes and you're already seeing the benefits and of, the changes yeah. were incredible like seeing the swallows just absolutely just <laughs> dive bombing those uh, crops just loving it was just amazing so it's Who going to be really interesting when you've got more swallows than you can handle <laughs> exactly and they were they were, they were they were nested everywhere yeah they were you know they were literally they found some really creative places and they, for them they love the swing there's a there's a wire that runs yeah. through one of the the, the sound wires under that's the in courtyard the, yeah and it's like a swing and they were using they were showing off their sort of dexterity by sort of swing swooping in landing on that and then swinging back and forwards and having a lovely time and then shooting off <laughs> it's very cool it's uh, you know the, um yeah they they do look amazing and it's just lovely to have them here and uh, so it's very sad to see them go because it is kind of the end of the summer but equally it is noisy really and equally nice. plentiful geese yes the exactly the geese are coming yeah. and um, and it's so nice to have so many motorhomes with us it's yeah. lovely you know they're uh, they're all really enjoying the space it's a really nice atmosphere I, I say that every podcast every podcast it's probably changed though so last time it was slightly more you know it was livelier than it is at the moment now I think a lot of the people that are here are very much the people that are looking to get the last bit of kind of summery almost weather um, while it's a little bit quieter so yeah. it's a different atmosphere but it's a really really nice one yeah no it's um, it's and we've got um, you know September's going to be hopefully a you know a lovely month you know with some with some good weather um, we'll be uh, planting up some more crops and you know, some more flowering crops around the farm um, you know there's lots of wildlife coming on it's a really great time to come and do bird watching and, um, and wildlife watching on the north Norfolk coast so and there's, there's more space and it just feels 
you know feels nice so if you're feeling particularly you can... there i think the lockdown and, and and the global pandemic seems to have you know split the country almost in terms of some people that aren't maybe taking too much notice in terms of what you know some of the guidance and some people that are making taking a lot of notice and feeling quite anxious about it and then um, this is a brilliant time for the the latter half of the people that feel really quite anxious or maybe people that need to take more care and um, with social distancing this is a great time to come yeah yeah this is a good uh, you know it's a good place to escape the crowds and get away from it and yeah. you know and, and it's calm on the site and it's, it's really, just yeah. yeah it's good it's good so what you know You've got anything, you know, got anything major planned in the next couple of months? You know, anything, anything big? Well, I've recently, I've, um, I, I went recently at the weekend and did some paddleboarding for the first time. I did it in Burnham Deepdale. It was such, uh, honestly, it was amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. And so I want to do that a couple more times, see whether or not maybe I'd, it's worth investing in a paddleboard. Well, I, I wanted to mention a, a massive thank you to the incredible pantaloons. The pa- guys. I knew you were going to say that, the pantaloons, yeah. Yeah, because um, the first one that we had, the Sherlock Holmes on the 22nd of August, was just one. We love having the pantaloons anyway, they're, they're a great bunch four actors playing many parts in very silliness in plays they find the the, the humor in 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 anything from shakespeare to to um you know far more deep and dark uh, sort of uh, things but it's just great they, they really are funny and they're very entertaining and they came out and they after all the hassles they'd had of having to cancel and change and rebook, uh, yeah. and, rebook and then they got two dates with us so they got the 22nd of um, of August when they brought um, Sherlock Holmes which was really funny really really funny very enjoyable beautiful weather lovely evening to watch it then they came on the 28th and it was like a different part of the year entirely and it was only six days later and um, yeah we started by thinking it was going to be rain all the way through and then it was dry when they started so we were thinking oh fantastic this is really good and about an hour and 15 minutes into the play they'd removed the intervals so that there wasn't sort of mad rushes for toilets and stuff and they had reduced the length of the plays anyway sort of meet with covid they had probably 20 minutes left of the play to go and it became biblical the heavens like, opened it was oh, i no. i had waterproof trousers on a waterproof jacket my big akubra australian hat and i was still soaked <laughs> and the oh, water no. and the the hats off to the actors who just were amazing they stopped when it really hit because I was I walked out to the car park and I could see the trees over in the rectory wood suddenly just went left and right like sort of you know sort of probably swung by about 40 degrees you know really? just in as the wind hit them and I thought oh gosh oh god we're in trouble <laughs> oh god <laughs> and I went so I went back into the thing and it just came in and it just went bam <laughs> And it, it should have been the Tempest they were doing. They weren't. They were doing Twelfth Night. And um, it was, yeah. And there was one point where they were literally holding onto the stage because they were going to blow away. Both the audience and the actors stopped for a little bit. And the actors said, do you want us to carry on? And I'm not sure how happy they were when the when the customers went, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> and I, yeah, I'm not fully certain that the actors were pleased about that but they were troopers they they were troopers they made it through the play despite the fact that they had to do a little bit of ham acting just to cope with the conditions see part of me kind of thinks when when you're wet you're wet you know you know you're not going to get any that really what i felt for them and oh oh, well i was surprised actually that the audience wanted to carry on because I can. I was going to ask. Sure, you know there must be a lot of people then, but have no idea what the last twenty, what happens in the last twenty minutes of Twelfth Night. But no, good, good, good going for the I audience. Was, as I well. was impressed. And, you know, the audience. Yeah, hats off to them for staying. Yeah. And, and I guess also hats off to the. Although the, the you know you've got some quite quite impressive weather, then you're quite lucky that you were able to make so much of it in the dry. Yeah, no, it's true. We, we, you know, more than three quarters, I think, of the play were done in the dry. Okay, and, well that's good. And, and the and the. You know the, the the act. You know, pantaloons sort of always say, "Look, we're just we. You know, we cope with whatever the weather is. You yeah. know, we're not fair weather guys." And yeah, th- that proved 
without a shadow of a doubt that they aren't good fair weather going guys. pantaloons yeah, well done good job so I'm really looking forward to having them back next year yeah. and we're um, because we're re-roofing the barns yeah. um, we're hoping that we'll be able to do some indoor theatre uh, yeah. through the winters and stuff as well yeah. which have be some more versatile cool. kind of event yeah so that yeah. should be really good and it'd be really nice because they do they do indoor events through the winter and quite a lot of other touring companies do as well so mm-hmm. hopefully we'll see a bigger bigger programme of, um, of theatre at Deepdale which would be really nice Fantastic. so that'd be really cool so I can sort of be in sort of line with our th- um, our live music stuff as well which would be yeah. really cool because live arts just is something really special about that so yeah anyway, but, uh, absolutely well thank you for chatting with me thank you for having me again it's and, always um, a pleasure um, oh I have to mention I have to mention that uh, Nathan and I were on the um, United We Ag po- uh, podcast yeah which um, is a podcast done by a, a lovely American guy called Derek and he's a farmer and he also runs this podcast and um, so he was chatting to us about you know the future of Deepdale and you know what we do and our plans of going organic and all that sort of stuff, which was you know great fun to do. Um, but one of the things he really loved was uh, Simon's top fives, the hammocks. Yes, yeah. and he particularly <laughs> loved the hammocks one because his brother was a massive hammocks fan and, <laughs> and uh, was so excited about it. So uh, yeah, so I've I've uh, commissioned uh, Simon to do some more top fives, which I'm hoping will uh, will pop up at various points. So you never know. Oh bless him! I can one feel may... the pressure for Simon. <laughs> It's like, God, he's going to have to start doing research and all sorts. <laughs> well, the, the research he'd done into the hammocks was... was yeah, pre- Although I know a lot of that was in his head because he loves that subject. Yeah. I, I, I mean, don't he's think very... he struggled too much with the beer one either. I think he found yeah. that relatively easy to do. I would have thought so. There yeah. are probably quite... He, he's very knowledgeable on a lot of stuff. So I can imagine there, there will be quite a few things that he'll be able to give you a very educated opinion on the top five stuff. So I'm quite looking for... I'll probably pick and choose. Like, I'm not a big... I don't drink, so beer isn't really my thing but yeah when he starts talking about different types of you know like top five walks on the Norfolk coast and stuff he's, he's heavily into walking yeah because so he does be love well his walking that. so yeah, um, yeah we, he, he, there, sh- there may be one in this podcast oh but I haven't received it yet God, so even I'm not, I'm not allowed in on the sequel what so the hell <laughs> I'm not promising to anybody who's listening that there will be one but there may be one mm-hmm. so there you go so I'm, I'm just bringing the proviso in. So should we, we should probably... I was going to say, that's and an incentive be, to listen to the end, isn't it? Well, maybe maybe we, what we should do is we should record two bits where we say, and of course, uh, this will be the top five from Simon just coming up. Or, I'm really sorry that Simon sorry. hasn't managed to do a top five for He's this time. He's not got around to it this time. He's been too busy doing research and, then, and getting drunk on beer. <laughs> That's maybe harsh, but um, you know, yeah, good research. Um, but so uh, yeah, so we, we'll see what happens. You know, you you never know, you never know. But yeah, it was just he was really chuffed to be um, you know name checked in an international podcast about his top five. So yeah. that was really cool. Good going, so, Simon. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Good job, Simon. <laughs> Thanks again, Georgie, and we'll we'll chat chat again see you soon. Next time. Yeah. See you later. Okay. Cool. So thank you for listening for the Deep Dale podcast. It's really lovely to have you with us. Um, it's really enjoyable doing this and it's great that we get so much feedback and stuff. If you've got anything you want us to cover, anything you want us to chat about, uh, then just drop us an email uh, to stay at deepdalebackpackers.co.uk. The guys will p- uh, put it through to me. They'll say, Jason, you need to include this. You need to conclude that. But yeah, just, just drop us an email. It'd be great to hear from you. And um, yeah, let us know your thoughts and let us also know really good podcasts that we should be listening. Um, you can subscribe to this podcast really easily. Uh, it's available through nearly any podcast um, subscription service, um, you know, whether it's Apple, CastBox, where we, we host it. Um, I know that it's on the Google uh, Podcasts as well. Um, or we'll always post them on our website as well so you can listen directly from our website. But you know, thanks for listening and uh, we look forward to seeing you um, during the October Deep Dell podcast. Cheers, guys. Skies all open wide, geese go high and over. Oh, now you're a beach coma, fist full of sand. Lavender See yeah.